know, in a municipality or a school district, a parent or a group of parents begins to raise the question, how is my athletic field being managed? How can we do this? How can we move away from chemicals? We'd like to see less synthetics on our fields. There will be a learning curve for either the decision maker or the practitioner that's in charge of implementing these programs. It doesn't need to be overly complicated though on the implementation side. It has been my experience and my firm belief that the more widespread adoption of organic or natural practices is simply limited by the lack of education on how to do it. It can be simplified right down to a little bit of education, some soil testing, choosing the right product, implementing and getting that right product down at the right time of the year, incorporating aeration and overseeding into the program and where 75% of the way on our road to successful natural management. It has been our experience in the natural management program with the right choice of product inputs, proper aeration, and the introduction of grass seed as an overseeding tool that we've been able to produce turf systems that are thick, dense, with a deep probing root system that actually stand up to athletic play. It is the deep, strong root system and the active biomass that promotes growth that is strong and durable. It can be damaged, but with the right choices of grass in the right regions of the country, we can get grass that repairs itself from that damage. And again, that's all part of the proactive program that we don't just sit back and let a little bear spot get to be a big bear spot. We proactively manage that because we're looking at the big picture always. In the initial site analysis, we identify the strengths and weaknesses of any turf system of that soccer field, the football field, the baseball field, or the passive public park. How much grass is growing there? What is the turf density? How many grass plants per square foot? Is the turf thick or is it thin? Are there weeds present or are there not? The next step we actually takes physical soil tests and we will be collecting soil to run three different uh, tests. We would want to understand the sand, silt, and clay percentage, in other words, what that soil is made up of. Uh, we refer to that as the textural analysis. We want to do a soil chemistry test, which tells us things like the macro and micronutrients, the pH of the soil, the cation exchange capacity, a relative uh, acidity or alkalinity of soils, and the organic matter fraction. And then the third test, which is relatively new and not done by everybody, is a soil biological assay where we now have technology that can identify exactly what's in that soil for living organisms, their individual populations, how many of them are active and working. After all that data is collected, we begin to then address the input side of the program. Our inputs are very different than the conventional program where we're simply going to reach for a series of bags at times of the year to address the immediate needs of the turf grass. We are going to be in developing a program that will address certainly the immediate needs of the turf grass with product input, meaning fertilizer, but we will also be including product that is directly going to address the health of the microbial community knowing that if we do that properly over this transition period, at some point that soil is going to pick up a lot of the needs of the turf grass in the future, therefore experiencing our cost reduction. I can assure you that if you take that first step, seek information on how to do it, then we're armed with the appropriate information to begin to move forward and make some concrete decisions that will then structure and guide a natural program to success in the future.